gathered together, of course, can communicate and relate to each other. Yeah, the Amish tend to uh, shy away from technology. And uh, I'm reading here what's the difference. It says Mennonites versus Amish differences. But since they were in my family and I had friends that were Amish and Mennonites, and then in Kentucky, how I lived there 20 years from 20, well, 98 till 2015 is 17 years, right? But I was with him for 20 years and legally married 15 years. But during that whole 20 years, the Amish Fellowship, they had a, a different way of coming to the table, and they shared communion with me, but it was because I came and had Amish table food and bought their food at the Amish, uh, where they all bring it to like a flea market, Amish flea market, in their horse and buggies in Kentucky. I loved living like that because the food was good. And we grew it ourselves, or they grew it themselves, and my husband would sell it. And my husband could have been an Amish easy, and they really loved him because he had that German look. They knew he was German and had the black hair and the dark skin and, you know, sold their food for him on his uh, stand when before he died. So the Amish, uh, but they were no touching. So that must have been where my grandmother got no they don't touch in public. So now I just realized reading this Amish, I get why my grandmother and them, they didn't touch, had, had a different uh, way of uh, conservatism. And I bet you that was a lot of the way it was back then. They didn't show affection. Uh, we've come a long way, folks. But you think about how America was started and who all came over here. And started from Virginia and getting off the, the boats and uh, New York up and down Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. But let's see. They, nowadays, you can just – it says distinguish from Amish six steps. The Amish tend to be isolated communities, avoid using modern technology. Mennonites are not restricted in these ways. That's what I was confused about. But yet they still – weren't allowed to come over and play with the English. Uh, so we were different, even though we were all in the same family. So our family was split with my great-grandmother's sisters when they would come and bring my cousins. So uh, anyway, so folks, families can be all intermixed. And I guess that's why I wound up being a Latter-day Saint. I don't know. Because the Mormons had great fellowship in families and their culture. In the modern day, of course, they believed in technology, and you drive to the church and sit in the church, and you know the men go to priesthood meetings, and the women go to home something. I don't know, but we had family home evenings on Monday, home economics or something. I don't know. I never got into that. I mean, I was, I was, oh, Relief Society president. Yeah, I was a Relief Society president once. But the women had certain meetings, and then everybody would go to church. But, uh, you know, German priests were Menno uh, Simons, who was revolutionary leader of the community. The Amish were born out of the Mennonites. Oh, I didn't know that. Did you, Richard? The Mennonites had the 16th century when Swiss priest Jacob Ammon, Ammon separated from them, from them. So he believed they did not blow Oh, follow enough strictness. I didn't know up. that. I didn't either. And it's just uh, what are called the Amish. So the uh, people wanted stricter uh, than the Mennonites had. The German priest Menno Simons, uh, it was for Menno, Mennonites, were named for the German met priest Menno Simons. Now, folks, you can look this up yourself, but we're just sharing today and love one another in the different forms of love, uh, even in the church. So the leader of the community. So the communities would have this gentleman, and he was a Mennonite. Uh, well, they started the name in the 1600s in Germany. German priest Menno, M-E-N-N-O, Simons, S-I-M-O-S, evolutionary leader of the community. And then the Amish were born out of the Mennonites later in the 16th century 
when Swiss, Swiss, a Swissman, German Switzerland, right there close to each other, named Jacob Amen, A M M A N, ergo Amish, Amish Mennonites. Anyway, Amen separated from them. He believed they did not follow their strictness based on shunning worldly things, and his followers were called Amish. So their differences went on, and uh, they have different clothing, the Mennonites and the Amish, but they still make the best clothing themselves. And they, uh, that's only a, that's, uh, they had their own, Richard, where I went to get the food, they had their own clothing store, and uh, they made it, right? And they could only wear certain colors. Uh, did you know that? Hmm. Well, you probably, right? Yeah, but you didn't probably... yeah I, I had noted that the colors were very sedate to their clothes. No vibrant colors or anything like yeah. that, you know. That can, the Amish can wear like black or uh, dark blue, light blue, gray, tan, brown, uh, and even a subtle green. But the Mennonite colors are more like black, blue, gray, and tan colors. But the Mennonite shirts are usually button-down shirts with a pocket or polo shirt. Now, how to distinguish Mennonite from an Amish? I don't know, Richard, if we could pass that test. And But uh, usually I think it's the Amish that we think more of with the horse and buggy and the black and the underskirts and the white bonnets. And I'm looking at some pictures. But anyway, just a close glam of world religions and what stemmed out of the 1600s, even when the – Bible came around, and uh, now people may want to hear more spiritual, metaphysical topics uh, today, but it's interesting to me, and uh, it is uh, the history of how we became who we are today through all the world religions that touched our lives, and we are open and welcoming, especially to the LBGTQ uh Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, trans community uh, because I remember when the Mormons, the Latter Day Saints, wouldn't let the black in. Personally, I remember that, and then they all of a sudden had a revelation, and now they could come in through the head of the church. So I'm sure that he's going to have a revelation because they're losing too many members, and my brother it just killed his soul because he was such a avid Latter-day Saint, but he was born with my sister, and they were twins, which Richard, you know, I've talked about. Now, that was a unique kind of love, because I had to help. I was like 11 going on 12, I think, when they were born. I'm 10 years older, so I was 10, 10, because they were born January 23rd, I think. Yeah, and uh, I was born in 51, and they were born in 61. So they were born at the first, so yeah, 10 years. Interesting. So I got to put diapers on them and help mother because she had uh, my younger sister Brenda, my brother Nat, who is now deceased, and my brother Hugh, Charles Houston Thurman, and then uh, the twins. Of course, then she had Tish after that. But uh, my brother was born gay, and, uh, you know, they say – You're not born that way, but I guarantee you he was because he just looked different from the time. I kept telling Mother there was just something different about him. But he wasn't maternal. They weren't identical. They were paternal, separate sacs, separate feed, just born together and close as they could be. But we lost him due to AIDS at a very young year. But he got to be on Oprah Winfrey's show and leave some videos uh, of him. I'll have to grab those too. But anyway, back to colors. These uh, love apparently uh, has to do into these distinguishing worlds of communities based on the colors. Uh, they want them where you you can't really distinguish uh, from one from another. And I remember a big thing here, Richard, in the schools here because so many for several years the the uh, regular people couldn't afford the logos like polo and all that. Uh, you may not have had children, but do you remember that era where the kids in high school couldn't were having to wear plain and you couldn't wear uh, 
certain Adidas. We, I guess they're over that now for shoes, but they they were just something doing on banning clothes. I don't know who won through that, but a lot of the, it made a lot of the other kids feel inferior that their parents and couldn't afford that. And since mother had so many, I imagine we would have been in that if it hadn't been for our rich kin, the Wrights in New York, sending us all their fancy clothes or mother making ours. I, I mean, if we got a store bought dress, that was something. But there were so many of us, even though we were from an upper middle class family. Uh, but do you remember that, Richard? When they and that is a form of love. It's love for the community of the people that can't afford the fancier stuff, and the kids shun them at school. Or meant they wouldn't have anything to do with them. But I want to I want to talk about the shunning too at the table of because I've got a table deal, and I keep thinking of Sir Richard Knights of the Round Table, <laughs> a round table, but. Well, yeah, I can, I can, I can remember, you know, back, back when, uh, you know, you could either afford name brands or you couldn't, you know, and yeah, you could say that the the ones that could afford it formed cliques or whatever and sort of kept to themselves or looked down their nose at others that couldn't afford them, but I would say overall the majority probably could afford things like Levi's and, you know, different name brands that were not as expensive as, like you said, Adidas or, or any of the sportswear that, you know, uh, Ralph Lauren and all the rest of it that's come out uh, that was all trendy and, and, you know, all designer brands and all this kind of thing. But, I mean, uh, overall, of course, in California, uh, I don't think there was that much to do made of it simply because, you know, uh, California's a uh, different kind of culture unto itself. I mean, um, everybody's very open. Everybody's very um, communicative for the most part. Uh, and now that's not to say that, you know, that there aren't such things as bullying and rejection and things of that going on because you find that in every culture and regardless of whether we're talking religion, regardless of whether we're talking community, regardless of whether we're talking state, regardless of whether we're talking country, uh, that goes on around the world. But uh, the thing of it is, you know, I don't think there was so much heed paid to it that it made that much of a significant difference. At least that's what I found in the high schools of California anyway. Well, in Birmingham, uh, my kids uh, all separated from their uh, families and divorced, all of them young. So Jaden uh, Skipper, who grew up here with me his last few years, and I got the honor of showing him how to drive my van so he could take his test but I was very honored to be living here to do those kind of things as a grandparent because when his cousin Stephen Ryan that's now an Air Force pilot uh, my oldest daughter's son in the Air Force uh, he, I got to see them very scare, scarcely at Birmingham because they were just little in elementary and I was working for the government but I'm sure now that he's in the Air Force, he could understand. But then I'm sure he didn't, you know. So he he uh, doesn't remember me, I'm sure. Uh, I doubt he remembers any of us that much. Uh, they they came back here selling a home they have, and they've been transferred back to Texas in the Air Force uh, from this base here to, uh, I guess it's Lackland. Uh, down the road um, past where I live. In the, I live in Gulf Breeze, and there's Navarre and like Fort Walton. Anyway, all the bases down there. So they came back to sell their house. But, you know, that's love too, but it's unconditional love. I'll always love all my grandchildren. But unfortunately, they didn't know much of growing up around me because I was always on the go. I was either, you know, in a government contract or in country or out of country and doing my job. And I was one of those women, like my kids called me superwoman because uh, I was like Wonder Woman. But uh, they always said, that's mommy, Wonder Woman, even to this day. And then my grand, uh, my daughter died having Wonder Woman, all that. And then she got a Wonder Woman tattoo and gave one to my oldest daughter's. Uh, of course, tattoos are in now for kids, so it's not like it used to be. They can tattoo their skin, but I uh, don't suggest you do it if you're going in the military, but I did it after I got in the military the second time around, but I uh, got 
uh, that's a long story and a different type of love to remember who you are, why you're doing what you're doing, and to help you remember. But uh, the grandchildren, it's hard in today's society. 